Hi, I'm Nigel Atherton, the editor of What Digital Camera, and today we're looking at the Pentax K200 Digital SLR. The Pentax K200D is uh, Pentax's new entry-level digital SLR, replacing the K100D and the K100D Super. It comes complete with the 18 to 55 mm f 3.5 to 5.6 AL2 kit lens, and it has a 10 megapixel CCD sensor and a 2.7 inch LCD screen. The camera has quite a compact body and it's plastic construction but don't let that put you off because it is probably the most robust and most weatherproofed camera in its class, certainly around the 500 pound mark. There's around 60 seals around all the entry points here to prevent any dust and moisture from getting inside the camera, which is something you don't normally find at a camera at this price. The top of the camera is fairly simple. On the top left is the mode dial where you can select the exposure mode and there's the usual uh, suspects here, program, shutter speed priority, aperture priority, manual mode, there's a B mode, there's the most common uh, subject modes which are portrait, landscape, macro, action and night portrait and there's a flash off mode. Uh, there's also a scene button where a scene uh, position where you can select a further eight scene modes on the, on the menu of the camera and an auto pick mode where you let the camera choose which scene mode is the best for the subject you're photographing finally there's something unique to pentax which is the sensitivity mode where you can select exposure combination that you want and it's the it's the iso which uh, moves to give you correct exposure okay moving around to the right hand side of the camera Around the shutter button there's the on-off switch, which when you turn it on, you hear that little rattling and vibration. That's the anti-dust control shaking the sensor to remove any dust from the sensor. And then if you take it all the way to the right, there's the depth of field preview. Behind that you've got your exposure compensation and a reset button to uh, reset all the settings back to the default after you've been uh, playing with them. And then finally there's the LCD screen at the back with your data display on it. The back of the camera is fairly familiar to anyone who's used a digital SLR before, there aren't too many surprises. You've got your menu on button on, the, on there, uh, you've got an info button which when you're taking a picture displays all your, your information. In playback mode, which is denoted by the blue paint, uh, this button is the waste button to delete pictures and the playback button. And up here, where you've got your data input control, uh, doubles in playback mode as the magnification of the image and you've got a, a lock any pictures you want to save. Down at the bottom side you've got the anti-shake on off switch and then the normal four-way controller but below that you've got a function button you'll find the main controls that you're likely to want to use most often the ISO, the drive mode, the white balance and the flash mode. Now, I don't really like the function button as much as I would like having individual buttons for these functions because to use it, say for example you want to go from ISO 400 to 100, you've got to press the button once to get to the function display, then you have to press the right hand button to select ISO, then you have to press, there you go, all the way up to go to 100. That's eight button presses to get to ISO 100. Then when you've done that, suppose you want to change the uh, white balance, the instinctive thing to do is to press the OK button, but then of course you lose the display, you've got to press the function button again, start all over again, go to the uh, white balance mode, press what you want. Now you can, instead of pressing the OK button, press the function button, which takes you back to the main interface, but it seems a bit counterintuitive because you always instinctively want to press the, the OK button. I'm sure once you got used to it, it wouldn't be a problem. And then at the top there, you've got the drive modes. Now here you've got single, continuous. Continuous, you've got low or high. High mode is uh, about 2.8 frames a second, which is pretty low actually in this, in this market. Most other cameras can do a lot more than that. And even then, only for about four frames before the buffer fills up, um, which is, uh, again, not as good as the competitors. And the low mode is uh, just over one frame a second. The menu is fairly self-explanatory. All the functions that you need are here. It is a bit, bit crude and a bit dated, the, the graphics. Uh, they're not the most sophisticated in the world, but uh, they do the job. On the front of the camera, on the left, is the RAW button, which is unique to Pentax and probably one of the best features of the camera. In this mode, you can save going to the menu to select whether you want to shoot JPEG or RAW plus JPEG, and there are two JPEG, sorry, two RAW modes. There's PEF, which is Pentax's own RAW mode, and there's the DNG, the universal mode. 
Um, ordinarily, when you want to switch between the two, it involves going to the menu and pressing quite a few buttons. But this is a shortcut button, which means that you can say, leave the camera in JPEG most of the time, and then when you want to shoot a picture in RAW to get the maximum quality, you can just press that button and it'll take that picture in RAW. Now, I quite like the handling of this camera. It's uh, one of the heavier cameras in its class, which suits me because I don't like the camera to feel too light and flimsy. Some people may find it a bit too heavy compared to some of the competitors, but it's nice and chunky and solid, and it does feel fairly robust. All the controls feel nicely to hand, and uh, there aren't too many of them. In fact, there possibly could be a couple more for my taste. As I said before, the ISO and white balance, for example, I prefer them on the body. But it does mean the camera is nice and uncluttered. The viewfinder is nice and bright and you can see it, you can see into the corners without any problem and you can see the display at the bottom quite nicely. In use it performs pretty well. I think the focusing is not the best in the world. It's an 11 point AF system uh, which, is, which is okay but uh, it's not the fastest focusing in the world. I think possibly using some of the more premium lenses with the motors in the lenses would probably improve that at additional expense. Another thing to point out is the flash. It doesn't automatically pop up when the light is low. So uh, there's a little flashing uh, flash symbol in the viewfinder telling you you need flash, and you've got to remember to manually pop it on when you want to use the flash. Otherwise, it'll just get a long exposure. The camera's performance is, is OK. The, it has an 11-point focusing system, which is not bad, but the camera's quite slow to focus. Um, it's quite noisy, too, very noisy. You can hear it whizzing back and forth there. This would improve if you used some of Pentax's premium uh, lenses that have motors built into them, but with the standard kit lens, it isn't the best performance in the world. It's adequate. The exposures uh, from the K200D are generally okay. Uh, you do have the option on the back of the camera to set it so you've got an over and under exposure warning flashing. Uh, it flashes red for overexposure and yellow for underexposure. And there's also a histogram display which you can look at as well. Um, the camera is easily fooled sometimes by large areas of brightness, for example, if you've got a lot of sky in the shot. Um, but that's, I guess, with experience to be, to be expected. But on the whole, exposures are, are good. Colour's nice, uh, they're nice and sharp. There's no real issues with image quality. The pictures are generally very pleasing. Overall, the K200D is a pretty good camera. It's a bit rough around the edges compared to the likes of uh, Canon and, uh, and Nikon. Uh, you can see that, for example, in the menus and some of the controls are perhaps a little bit on the clunky side and not very intuitive. But the picture quality is very good, even up to ISO uh, 1600. Again, it's not a very fast camera. The focusing is slow and noisy. The 2.8 frames a second isn't very good. So if you're into sports or action photography, this probably isn't the camera for you. But for more sedentary subjects like landscapes and portraits, it's absolutely fine. And as I say, the picture quality is pretty good, so you should be very happy with it once you get to know it. Overall, the camera is fair value for money. There's no live view, but it does have image stabilisation, dust reduction, it has the, the raw shortcut button. The performance is pretty good, the picture quality is pretty good. Uh, so overall, we give it a score of 88%. Thank <laughs> you.